we are going to uh, look at and try to figure out the principal stress state in the full 3D case instead of the kind of this um, basically plain stress state. So given a stress tensor, can we find the full 3D Mohr circle and the three-dimensional uh, principal stress state and what's the maximum shear stresses and all these kind of fun values. So let's go ahead and look at how we want to approach this problem. So we've already dealt with this uh, tensor and we want to look at basically I'm going to look at this is my 1, 2 plane. I'm going to look at my green is going to be my 2, 3 plane. And then my blue is going to be my this, 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 my 1, 3 plane. So let's deal with the 1, 3 plane first. So I can, um, I'm going to show you the more circle method of how to do this. And then what I would do, which is the linear algebra approach, which is one line of code. <laughs> so stay with me uh, and then I'll show you the nice neat trick eigenvectors eigenvalues uh, beautiful system um, so here in this one three step state what's my more circle well i have a point at 22 i have a point at zero so in the one three plane i'm already in my principal stress state so what's the rotation to get to my maximum shear stress state well it's a two theta rotation of how many degrees 90 so it is a real theta of 45 degrees. So that's if you're already in your principal stress state, those are kind of your values. So from this plane, my largest you know, principal stress is going to be 22. Again, this should be zero. I'm just, <laughs> uh, this is the value here. I'm just drawing it for illustration purposes. And my sigma 2, my minimal principal stress, the you know, smallest uh, principal stress is this sigma 2. What about my 2, 3? Well, and be very similar. So tau here, so I have a value at 10 and then at zero. So my or circles like this, I'm already my principal stress state. How do I get to maximum shear? Again, two theta of 90, theta is 45. And that's why, oops, not percent, Josh, degrees. Um, and this is why oftentimes when we're in a stress state like this, a uniaxial tension, so when I'm already in my principal stress state, i.e. sigma equals sigma 1, 2, 1, 1, and everything else is 0, I'm in my principal stress state here. That's why materials, metals specifically, will fail at 45 degrees, because that's where maximum shear occurs. So let me erase that, and I'll ask you those questions a little bit later on in a problem set. Uh, so now I could also do my red. So we actually already knew uh, what those values are. So I'm going to do that really quickly. Here, here, here. Our center was 16. We had a point at 22. We had a point at 10. We had 6 and 6. And then basically we would kind of cross here. And then this value is right here. And then we had a point here, point here. We'd go through. We had to go through this. 2 theta equals 45 in order to get our principal stress state, and that was just our center, which was equal to 16 megapascals, plus our radius, which was 6 root 2, i.e. Uh, basically 72, you know, square root of 72. So here, our principal stress rate was basically our center plus our radius, and 2 was going to be equal to the center minus the radius. Now, if I want to draw my full 3D Mohr circle, I need to look uh, at first what was the largest value of sigma 1, what was the next largest value of sigma 2, and then what was the smallest value of sigma 2. So let's go ahead and figure out what those values are. So here, oh sorry, let me also write it out. Here my sigma 1 was equal to 10, and my sigma 2 is equal to 0. So Let's go ahead and figure out those values. So what's my largest value of sigma 1? So I'm not sure about this. Actually, I do know. <laughs> but let's go ahead and just do it. So it's not going to be. It's between 22 and 16. 16 plus 6 squared root 2. We know that's going to be larger. Let's do that numerically. Yeah, that's larger than 22. So that is going to be my first value right there. So my 3D Mohr circle, so I'm going to start to kind of, I'm going to erase, so I need to look at, I'm going to find my, here, 
my sigma 1, my sigma 2, my sigma 3. So my sigma 1, my largest principal stress, is going to be my C plus R. Now, what's the next largest? What's the largest sigma 2? And again, this is in, not in magnitude, but in actual sign as well. Well, it's going to be C minus R. And what's my smallest sigma 2? It's a tie, and it's going to be equal to 0. So those are going to be my three uh, in my prints if I rotate my system and I only get uh, basically shear stresses, or excuse me, uh, normal stresses, uh, if I only have these diagonal components, these will be the three values. If I do that rotation, these will be the three values of Moore circle. So what I can do is draw my 3D Moore circle, which is going to be just, I'm going to cancel it out right here. So let me clear all. Sorry about that. So it's going to be tau. This is going to be my right here. So it's going to be C plus R. It's going to be a dot at C minus R. It's going to be a dot at zero. So I'm going to have a circle like this. Again, ignore the kind of relative sizes. A circle like this, and then a circle like this. So my maximum shear stress, that value, this value here is just going to be my C plus R over two. That's it. Because again, this radius or this diameter is going to be C plus R. So the radius here is just going to be uh, 2. So that is equal to my maximum. If I rotated and if I was in, you know, my maximum shear stress in this material, that would be that value, C plus R over 2. So that's it. That's your 3D Moore circle stress state because we know that this is sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3. That's it. So that is a nice expression. And then again, if we did that rotation, if we're in our normal or our principal 3D stress state, this would be my uh, tensor, just this. Perfect. Now, relatively, that's not a lot. However, I could go and do that much quicker using one line of code uh, in my kind of linear algebra approach. So if I look back at my stress state, so let's get the stress here, matrix form, I could figure out those three values by just looking at my eigenvalues of stress. So eigenvalues uh, is when we diagonalize that matrix. So let's look at those three values, n, and then I'm going to look at it in matrix form. There it is, exactly what we have, C plus R, C minus R. And then we'll do this numerically. We'll also multiply this by n. Again, multiply that by 10 to the 6, and you get that value. So 24 megapascal, or yeah, 24 megapascals is equal to this. 7 megapascals is right there. So that's it. If you're asked for that uh, value, and then you could also, you could actually do eigen system as well. Um, eigen system will also give you the vectors. So that'll be kind of the, rot you know, um, essentially the vectors are kind of where your coordinate system should be pointed uh, in order to kind of hit this um, state where you only have uh, normal components in your stress um, or you know, when you're in your 3D principal stress state. So eigen system of stress. You'll see I also get these, uh, I get my values, which are, again, right here, but then I get these series of three vectors, which is where my coordinate system should be oriented, or basically the direction in which they're pointing uh, in order to kind of diagonalize that matrix. So if you're asking one of those questions, you could kind of solve it either way. But I like, again, I like the linear algebra approach, but again, it's very you know straightforward. We just did it ourselves in order to kind of look at that 3D more circle. So, uh, I hope that helps, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.